الشيحي لرئاسة المجلس البلدي لمدينة بيروت. Good afternoon, you're watching the English newscast on Future Television. I'm Yumna Nelfed, and these are today's top stories. Rebel and government bombardment in Syria's Aleppo kill at least 14 civilians, emergency workers, and activists on the third day of renewed violence in the battered city. Hundreds of Orthodox Christians attend Palm Sunday procession in Jerusalem's Church of the Holy Spoke, mark the beginning of Easter week festivities. And UN brokered Yemeni peace talks in Kuwait entered the fourth day with government and Houthi rebel delegations still far from reaching an agreement to end the war. Hundreds of Orthodox Christians attended Palm Sunday procession in Jerusalem's Church of the Holy Sepulchre to mark the beginning of Easter week festivities. Pilgrims from around the world joined fellow Christians following clergymen who entered the church waving palm, fawns, and branches. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre is believed to be the site of Jesus' crucifixion, burial, and resurrection. Celebrations on Palm Sunday, a movable feast held on the first Sunday before Easter, marks the start of the Holy Week leading up to Easter Sunday, the most important date in the church calendar. According to Christian tradition, the date commemorates the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem just before his arrest and crucifixion, when followers strewed palm branches in his path. Rebel and government bombardment in Syria's Aleppo killed at least 14 civilians, emergency workers and activists on the third day of renewed violence in the battered city. Rebel rocket fired on government-held parts of the northern city killed six civilians, including a woman and two children, according to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights. And a barrage of government airstrikes that began around midday left at least eight dead. The strikes killed five people in a fruit and vegetable market in the neighborhood of Sahoud, according to a member of Aleppo's civil defense. Since a partial truce came into force in Syria on February 27th, Aleppo city has seen a dramatic drop in airstrikes and rocket fire. But government planes launched an intense campaign over the city on Friday, killing 25 that day and another 12 on Saturday. UN brokered Yemeni peace talks in Kuwait entered a fourth day with government and Houthi rebel delegations still far from reaching an agreement to end 13 months of war. Sources closest to the talk said on Saturday that the two sides had failed to reach an understanding on the need to fire up a fragile ceasefire in place on April 11th. The government delegation said overnight that the ceasefire should include opening safe passages to all besieged areas and releasing political prisoners as well as those abducted as part of confidence-building measures. The Iran-backed Houthis are demanding an immediate halt to airstrikes that the Saudi-led coalition has been carrying out since March 2015 in support of President Abdurrahman Mansour al-Hadi. The two sides also defer on the way to tackle other central issues. U.S. President Barack Obama hopes to influence some British voters to stay in the EU because Brexit will weaken the U.K.'s influence and slow down trade, he said, in one of a series of pro-EU interventions during his London trip. If you're interested in trade, we are on the cusp of getting a trade deal done with the European Union. If I am a business person or a worker in Britain and I'm looking at uh, the fact that I already have access seamlessly with a massive market, one of the wealthiest markets in the world, uh, that accounts for 44 percent of my exports. Uh, the, the idea that I'm going to be in a better position to export and trade uh, by being outside of that market and not being in the room setting the uh, rules and standards by which trade takes place, I think is erroneous. If the countries that are closest to you, that care about you the most, uh, the countries with whom you cooperate most frequently, those who you have a special relationship with are suggesting to you that you might be better off staying in this uh, relationship with Europe. Coming up next, actor George Clooney is set to award a $1 million prize in Armenia on the 101st anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Actor and director George Clooney is set to award a $1 million humanitarian prize in Armenia. 
The Oscar award-winning actor who arrived in the Armenian capital Yerevan on Friday is a co-chair of the selection committee of the Aurora Prize for Awakening Humanity. The ceremony to mark the inaugural presentation of the prize falls on the day Armenia commemorates the 101st anniversary of the mass killings of 1.5 million Armenians by Ottoman Turkish forces. So I've been involved for a period of time uh, and interested in uh, Armenia for a, a number of reasons. Obviously, there's always the, the question of sort of, uh, of identifying things like the Armenian genocide, and I think that that's something that has a lot of emotion in the United States as well. But when I met Ruben, he wanted to talk about finding uh, a version of, uh, of uh, Armenian history where we can talk about the great things that have happened and, and looking forward. And I thought, what a great idea to be able to find people who risk their lives at times, but uh, certainly give up virtually everything in, in their life to, in the service and help of others and to find a way to celebrate that. Our job as, uh, as public figures and, and as a son of a newsman, and my father was a newsman for 45 years, is finding ways, creative ways sometimes, to always be able to keep this in the news and not forget it. We tend to lose sight of the big story when the little ones come up. You know, we're in the middle of a presidential election in the United States. That takes over everything. You will never hear on, uh, or very seldom hear, uh, uh, stories about uh, the refugees right now. You'll hear very short uh, pieces about the refugees because we're not dealing with it very much in the United States, quite honestly, um, which we should. It's the constant, um, long before, uh, long after Armenia, um, and once they finally came up with the name genocide, which they hadn't until, until uh, World War II. Um, uh, after that, everyone said, had we known, we would have done something about it. If we just had known, um, and then we had um, you know, Cambodia, and then we had Rwanda, and then we, you, uh, the, then we had Bosnia, and Darfur, and we know, and that's the great sort of travesty of all of this is that every time we say, well, if we'd known, we would have done something about it. Well, we do know, and we see it, and we can see it happening in, in, in real time, and it's what do we do about that? Joining us through Skype today is Mr. Tare El Adi, leading entrepreneur in his native Alexandria, Egypt, and founding curator of Global Shapers Alexandria, a network of hubs developed and led by young people who are exceptional in their potential, their achievements, and their drive to make a contribution to their communities. Thank you for joining us, Mr. El Adi. How are you? I'm fine, thank you, Yomina, very much. Uh, Tarek, you shook up the technology world last year when you hosted the first Techni Summit in Alexandria. You are today here to talk to us about the second annual Technology Summit happening on May 7th and May 8th. And my first question to you is, why do you think it's important to capitalize on technological entrepreneurship in the MENA region? Well, you know, there's a big transformation happening in technology globally and in, in the Middle East. We have over 15 billion devices that are connected to the internet globally, and that number is expected to increase to over 50 billion by 2020. So we believe that issues like education, unemployment, and healthcare can be addressed with technology. Right, and specifically in the MENA region, because I know this is just in Alexandria. It's the, it's the, it's the, basically, it's the baby of the Alexandria hub, but I'm guessing you're also thinking of getting a lot other people to join in and contribute as well, right? From outside Definitely. of that right yeah. we have a lot of people joining from the region right uh, as entrepreneurs startups and attendees aside from the speakers who are coming from different parts of, of the world the press release mentions the addition this year of medical technology and competitions with startups so how is this year except for that how is this year different than last year's well in general Yona, the our event this year is under the patronage of the ministry of ICT okay and we have with many people who helped uh, reach out to different entrepreneurs in the region. We have partnered with SeedStars, where we have a competition for startups that is over a million dollars in prizes. We have Armex running a competition for e-commerce tracks and other competitions for early stage startups. So we have a lot of competitions, a lot of things going on, aside from the panel discussions that will be going on covering different uh, topics along the two days. Right. Tarek, you're an entrepreneur yourself, and I know that this probably uh, 
this probably inspired you to also make it more of a uh, regional, global, hopefully, issue. Why, why, why the summit tech? Why? Sorry, why what? Why a tech summit? Why a tech summit? Well, looking at all the startups that uh, are happening all over the world, they're either they're either tech startups or tech enabled. Right. So that that is over like maybe eighty percent or ninety percent of all the startups. So that's why we're covering this part uh, of 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 the startups and entrepreneurs. So everything is connected now. All the start, even if you have a social in initiative right. that is backed up with a technology application or reach out. So. We're supporting all these startups. This year's event is uh, supposed to hold around 100 speakers. Can you give us a brief overview of the topics that you think are going to be discussed? Yeah, sure. We have several topics and several tracks. For example, we have how Internet of Things and connected sensors can change the enterprise area. We're, we have a topic about socially smart cities and how to integrate smart tech to solutions to into urban communities. We have future of film, future of media. Okay, let me just... Let me just interrupt you there because you were talking about smart cities. You know, you were one of the founding curators of the Alexandria Hub as part of the Global Shapers. Um, since you founded the Alexandria Hub until today, have you seen that? Have you seen a change that you can tell us about with your contribution? Well, the, the Global Shapers community capitalizes on all the hubs that are all in the world. So it's a small change that you're doing in your city. But with everyone else doing that, we are t trying to change the world and trying to change all the challenges that are in our city. So as Global Shapers, we had projects uh, tackling education, empowering youth, empowering entrepreneurs. Right. And part of that is our summit, which contributes to, the, to these issues. What do you think today from Alexandria, what do you think is the biggest challenge facing the region? The biggest challenge facing the region, and in, uh, in my point of view, is is education, or let me say, in a broader range, is empowering young people right. to be able to achieve. Uh, yeah, the goals. Beirut Hub is working on that as well. Yeah. Yes, the sure. Beirut Hub is working on that as well. So it's funny that you say that. I think it's a problem that all the MENA is facing right now, just youth empowerment in general, and uh, and giving them the power, education, exposure, job opportunities. So is that really where you think it's going? Exactly. All right. Any closing remarks? Set an act framework to solve these challenges. I'm sorry. This a, there was a technological um, problem right now. Can you please repeat that? Uh, I'm saying you know, that we need to set, set an act to these challenges. All right. The future of this. Sorry, to, we apologize to our audience for that. That was Mr. Tarel Adi, leading entrepreneur in his native Alexandria, talking about the Technique Summit 2016. On that note, we end our bulletin for today. Now for a reminder of our headlines. Rebel and government bombardment in Sierra Aleppo kill at least 14 civilians, emergency workers and activists on the third day of renewed violence in the battered city. Hundreds of Orthodox Christians attend Palm Sunday procession in Jerusalem's Church of the Holy Sepulchre to mark the beginning of Easter week festivities. And a UN brokered Yemeni peace talk in Kuwait enters its fourth day with government and Houthi rebel delegations still far from reaching an agreement to end the 13 months of war. Those are your Sunday headlines live on Future Television. I'm Yumna Nofal signing off and wishing you a good week ahead. Take care. ترشيحي برئاسة المجلس البلدي لمدينة بيروت